What is up designers? I've got something awesome for you today. Check it out. Look at that. What? How cool is that? Right? So it's a Pikachu NFT. Super cool. Unless you've been living under a rock for the past couple of months, you've probably heard of NFTs. Now, the simplest way for me to explain it is it's essentially a way to make a digital asset have scarcity and proof of ownership. And it's all made possible using blockchain technology. Now I've fallen hook, line and sinker for the whole NFT craze. And I couldn't stop thinking about what Pokemon cards would be like reimagined as NFTs. Now there are a few projects out there that I find super interesting, but make sure to stick around to the end of the video and I'll be sharing an NFT platform that I believe will be huge in the future. Now, before we get into it, have you subscribed yet? You should. I make awesome videos about design and stuff. Now, let's get into this. So in today's video, I'm basically just going to be doing a very quick and brief walkthrough on how I actually achieved this effect, all right? So um, now a couple tools that I use, I use Figma to first um, design it, uh, and then I used uh, Webflow, um, and a couple of other tricks here and there. I'll go through it. Um, and yeah, I, I hope that it's useful for you and I hope you can pick up a few techniques here and there to use uh, in your own projects. So it's not a step-by-step -step walkthrough or it's not a step-by-step -step tutorial. It's more like a walkthrough. So I downloaded this um, reference here of this actual like, you know, card um, and I took reference from that and I ended up creating something like this okay so now let's jump into webflow and take a look at how I set up the HTML structure now um, the way that I set it up is very simple it's just kind of like the video that I went through before um, I'm actually gonna post it up here you can go check that out but I'll just quickly go through it um, essentially I have this wrapper that's holding on to this this card wrapper here this card wrapper has a couple of objects inside so it has you know the title it has the image it has the description and then it also has this shape in the background this shape here is actually positioned um, absolute um, and is set to Z index of negative so it's actually behind everything okay um, and then I kind of just eyeballed everything, you know, to get it positioned correctly. Um, and then inside it, I have this, this texture. Um, uh, okay, but the uh, most interesting part and the part that I'm sure all of you are here for is this um, sort of 3D effect for the Pikachu, right? So this, how, do, how did I get this working? Now, it's really simple. It's essentially a Lottie animation, okay? Uh, so I'm going to walk you through a little bit about um, how I arrived here. So first, what I did actually was I, let me open up. I used a tool called Blender. So Blender is an animation tool. It's a 3D modeling and animation tool. It's super, super powerful. And so here you can see I have Pikachu um, and I sort of set it up with, uh, you know, all of these sparks flying everywhere and everything. And um, let me turn on overlays. So you can see what's happening here. So I have these, uh, this track, this camera and track that is orbiting around Pikachu. And um, it's it's quite a simple thing to set up. So I'll, I'll actually leave a link to the tutorial that I followed to learn how to set this up. But essentially, I just wanted to have the camera orbit orbit around Pikachu, just not, not all the way, just a little bit. And um, I did two versions. So I did one version where it was with the lightning like this. And I did another version where if I, if I disabled the lightning, I did another version where it was just Pikachu himself, sort of like orbiting around him. Um, and then I basically rendered that out and I rendered that into sort of two folders. Um, so I did, you know, the lightning, as you can see here, it's just a sequence of images. So not a video. I didn't render out a video. I rendered out um, just a sequence of JPEGs. Okay. 
So you could see my folder here. And then after that, I actually took that into After Effects and use a tool called Body Movin. Now, Webflow has a fantastic tutorial uh, teaching you how to set up Body Moving and how to export a Lottie uh, JSON file uh, that you can use in Webflow. This in the link, uh, and I'll leave a link to this in the description below so you can go ahead and uh, you know, learn. Uh, by the way, Webflow University has fantastic uh, resources. So I recommend you go watch their stuff. Um, so then uh, after that, what I did was I got into um, After Effects. So I'll just show you really quick how I um, set up the whole body moving thing. So essentially, um, you come in here, you take all of your JPEGs and you drop it into After Effects. And then after you've done that, you want to create a new composition. Okay, so um, this is going to be, um, we're going to set the composition to treat each image as one second. So we're going to bring in um, each of the images for one second. And we're going to make sure sequence layers um, is checked. So that basically means it's going to do one image after the other. Okay, so we're going to say yes. And so you can see we have um, all the images brought in in a sequence at one second each. So if we scrub through, uh, we can sort of uh, get a preview of what that what that looks like. Now, instead of rendering this out, we're actually going to use a plugin called Body Moving, which um, I've linked to you below how to install that. So I'm going to come in here into Windows, Body Moving, and uh, there we go. Once it loads up. Sometimes it takes a while, but essentially we're going to make sure our composition is selected. We're going to go into settings and there are a couple things you have to make sure. So we go into assets and we're going to say enable uh, compression and we're going to say include in JSON. Now, depending on sort of the size of the file that you want, you're going to have to play around with this compression setting here. Um, and essentially um, you want to kind of find a, uh, you know, um, it, it's basically you have to make sure that the file isn't too large. Otherwise, um, you know, Webflow is going to have uh, trouble rendering it. So just play around with this value, export it a couple times uh, to get a size that you feel like it's acceptable, but still has good quality. So after I did that, you end up with this uh, JSON file, which is basically a long list of uh, like not readable code, but when you import that into Webflow, uh, let me go back to Chrome. So when we import that into our Webflow assets, what you get is this, um, you import it as, uh, it comes in as a Lottie animation and you get these, um, this animation that you can now drive using um, Webflow interactions. And that's what makes the effect possible. Okay. So let's just go through how I actually drove the Lottie animation using mouse X and mouse Y. So I have an interaction set up here on the card wrapper. So if we open that, I actually have this uh, mouse over element, uh, mouse move over element. So it's basically uh, this one. Um, so wait, let, me, let me, sorry, let me open that again. So once we go in there, um, you can see here that I actually have a couple things happening. So obviously I have the card rotating, the whole card wrapper rotating. That's what's giving it, uh, you know, that tilting thing. Um, and then if you look here, this Lottie animation at 0%, 0% means uh, my mouse is over here on the left side. At 0%, I'm setting it at 1%. Uh, one percent of the video that means it's the be the beginning of the Lottie animation, and then at a hundred percent, that means my mouse is over on the right side. Um, the Lottie animation is at ninety nine percent. Now something weird happens when you go all the way to a hundred. So if we preview this, you kind of see it it disappears when you get to the end. So that's why I have it set at uh, ninety nine, just so that like when you get to the end, it it doesn't uh, disappear. Okay, so that's that. And I have both of them um, on stacked up on top of each other. So I have the, the normal one underneath and I have the lightning one uh, on top. Um, and yeah, now let's go into our mouse hover interaction. So 
because I actually have both of the Lottie animations uh, stacked on, on top of each other, um, what happens is when you're not hovering over the element, I'm showing the uh, the normal one, right? Without the lightning. But when you hover over it, I'm fading in the um, the the lightning version of the animation. So if we go back into our hover on, you can see here uh, at the beginning, the opacity is set to zero. And then when you hover over it, the opacity is set to a hundred. And so that's what's giving that effect. Like, you know, when you hover over it, lightning uh, comes out. Uh, now I'm doing a couple of other things as well. I am, um, let's, let's go back to, the mouse over element. I'm also moving the uh, the the image itself, the Lottie animation, because essentially I want to keep Pikachu in the middle because as the effect is moving, as the as I hover over the card, um, I don't want Pikachu kind of shifting around too much. So I tried to also add an interaction to move the image itself just so that I, I try to keep it a little bit centered. And this all serves to reinforce this 3D um, effect. So yeah, that's essentially it. There's really not that much to it. It's just uh, using Lottie animations, exporting the 3D sort of rotating around Pikachu, and then setting it up uh, with Webflow interactions uh, to create this effect. Now, um, because I am a UX designer, obviously, I tested this design with a couple of my colleagues and my friends. Um, initially, actually, I didn't have the battle now button over there. Um, if I go back to Figma, I think I have the old. Yeah, so initially it was just, you know, it was just like this, right? Like, so you come here and then uh, I showed this to a couple of people and it was like, oh, cool. Yeah, I, I love Pikachu. And then it wasn't until I prompted them to hover over it that they hovered over it and, you know, got the um, uh, got the effect. So that's why I included this battle now button, which, uh, you know, uh, incentivizes the user to, you know, explore and see, see what happens. Um, so what I learned was basically users are not going, uh, sometimes won't hover over an element unless they're given a reason to. Now, obviously the UX of the battle now button kind of dodging your cursor, uh, isn't the best. Um, so I'd have to probably rethink that. But anyways, people were too busy like playing around with the card anyways. Um, uh, so if I were to turn this into a real product, I would probably maybe keep the battle now button there, maybe move it off to the side over here or some, something like that. But um, I think it's a bit annoying to have it move all the way down there. So we've reached the end of the video and I promised to tell you all about the NFT project that interests me the most. It's this app called Vivi, and it's essentially an augmented reality premium licenses collectibles app. They basically drop these super awesome high detailed collectibles from really, really big brands. And the other day I actually managed to get myself an interactive DeLorean time machine. Now, what excites me the most about this project is that they have Alfred Kahn working with them. If you haven't heard of this guy, he was the guy responsible for bringing Pokemon to the rest of the world. So make what you will of that information. I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.